my line work is shocking. Today we're creating as much art as it takes to get better. Look what I've got. I've got a brand new sketchbook and this is going to be the fifth messy sketchbook. We're going to start off nice and easy, try lots of different mediums and then get harder as we go along. Let's just quickly fill this front cover, shall we? All done, how's it looking? Is it looking really cute and messy? Let's get started. To start off, we're gonna head to Pinterest and just look for a simple floral design, I think. Something like a really simple tattoo idea. Something like this. You know what, the medium that you're using makes a huge difference. We're gonna test that theory. Let's do the simple flower. We've got Posca's brush markers near colors. These have quite a chunky nib, especially the metallic markers. These are naturally gonna be a lot easier than using something like this tiny little nib. So we're going to start off drawing the same flower over and over again with a different medium every time. One thing that a lot of the time people don't really realize is how much using a different medium can affect how confident and strong your lines are. If you're using fine liners all the time and don't feel like you're actually improving, a lot of the time it can be because that's just a difficult medium to use and get right. I'm starting off with Faber-Castell polychromos which come to a lovely sharp point. So naturally this one was just a lot easier. Moving on to the Caran d'Ache Luminance, this one doesn't come to as fine of a point. It feels a little bit scratchy on the paper and that shows in the lines that are produced. Fine liners are naturally quite hard to get right because you have to have a very steady hand and a lot of experience behind you to really get it good consistently. Highlighters are obviously difficult. Anything with a chisel tip is really just experience and I don't have that. My pink Posca looks a little bit dried up. I'm gonna give it a good shake and see how that goes because it just doesn't look very good to me. It doesn't look very alive. The brush marker was fun and easy to use but I think this one really depends on the type of brush marker you have. The neo colors are fun to use but obviously the end result isn't very crisp. The metallic markers are a 2.2 to 2.8 so because they are a really nice thick chunky nib like this, anything that makes your hand shake just a little bit more, something like the metallic markers, something with a really big nib will help disguise that. Then we move on to the least forgiving. The bullet nib from a marker which went surprisingly well but if you look at it up close you can see that there are slight jaggedy lines. Really thin fine liners and gel pens are so unforgiving you have to get it spot on and the pencil wasn't too bad. This is good. The mediums that I need to put the effort into trying to desperately improve are the Caran d'Ache Luminance, fine liners, gel pens, neo colours. I think if I press a little bit harder and get a bit more confident it won't have as much of that rough edge so it will just naturally look better. The brush markers I'm quite happy with but I am so bad with chisel tips. Things like highlighters, markers, I need to work on chisel tips and that's just a combination of it being a less forgiven medium, you having less confidence, less experience or you just find it difficult because you find it difficult. That's also completely valid. Okay I think that's it for flowers. Let's go on Pinterest and look for more references. Something that I often like to do is look for silhouettes of a couple or something just so I can do the liner around the outside. I did this in a video where I was trying to fill a mini sketchbook and I think that worked really well. So we'll try and look for something like that. Sometimes Pinterest is just crazy though. There's so much on here and if you've got a clear idea in mind you might never find it. We could try this one. This one's a little bit more zoomed out. A lot of them are literally just the faces so we're not going to get much there. I'll see what I can do with the metallics. In theory this big marker should be nice and forgiving so after we've done this we can move on to a more difficult medium. And obviously no sketches underneath which is a little bit scary. I'm going to do like a really simple style just because it's such a big nib. Focus on this a little bit more. There's a little bit that comes underneath here and kind of goes around like this, but that might be way too big now. And then there's like little necklaces. Well, I don't know about this. Oh, and there's other strands back here as well. I would say the markers are most forgiving because if you've got wobbly, shaky hands, they're so big that it just doesn't really show as much. Let's quickly go ahead and do the Caran d'Ache Luminance and a fine liner version. A 
Okay, ignore the faces, they're completely different and this one is so long for some reason but I had to kind of work with it. Do you see what I mean about this marker being a lot more forgiving because it's bigger? The fine liner is really obvious when the lines don't quite go to plan and the Candice Luminance I think goes better if I actually push harder on it. This is how the first page has turned out. Let's keep going, let's pick some more interesting references. I found this cute little bedroom on Pinterest that I think is really cute that I could try and do. But I think I'm going to use pencil to just block in the shapes first. I'm going to use this Neo color and it's quite stubby so I think it's going to be quite difficult to use which means I need to get it right. Yeah that's not very accurate at all but it's okay we'll make it look cute somehow. How many sheets does this bed have on it, honestly? kind of decent obviously the pillows are out of place but the lines aren't too bad i did it quickly i did it in five minutes i committed to the lines and i just did it and obviously that's why this doesn't make sense and the pillows are too far along but i did it in five minutes which i never would have been able to do before confidence and experience i think that's the way we're going to get through this we could use the brush pens oh this one's cute this is the same kind of vibe i like it because there's quite a lot going on so it's quite a few things to add maybe i'll start with the bookshelf i'm not great at perspective Perspective, especially when I'm doing things quickly so we'll see how this one goes oh these plants are very difficult there's so many leaves I don't really know how to do them I love the new camera I've got but you would not believe how bad the battery is like I've changed the battery once already for this video and we've been going like an hour well that wasn't a very good line brush markers can be difficult because you almost have to hold it to a certain point Oh, and we've got this random light that I've missed. And it goes behind and then... I don't quite like it, you know. I've never done anything like this before, but I think that looks pretty cool. I think it's an improvement from this one, but it does have more details. So it's hard to compare. What should we do next? Should we move back onto people? Oh, this is a difficult one. What about this? It's like an overhead shot of a group of people. Should we give that a try? Should we try like gel pens or fine liners? Or we could use biro. Biro could be cool. It's just a paper mate biro, but it's one, so it's a little bit thicker than fine liners generally. I already feel like this one's going to be difficult and we're going to do a little bit of negative space I think around the outside, fill in the background a bit. It's kind of like that and then this head as a body as they tend to and then the neckline here and there is a necklace. It does feel a little bit bumpy, it doesn't feel like a really nice roll. I think the pens need to be woken up a little bit, they're kind of old. So then the clothes are kind of baggy, it goes like this. Let's just try and get this moving. And then we kind of connect here. We've got an ear. This is such a weird angle to be doing this at. And then the eyebrows. And then the jumper comes around here. I've never done anything like this before in my life, honestly. Okay, so then there's kind of a crease here. And I suppose we could probably do the entire left side of the banister, like here. And then we've got like a little bit here. And then we need to do the hand poking through. So the thumb is kind of like this. That's two of them looking pretty decent. Has the neo color pressed into this? Yeah, it has a little bit. I'm gonna need something. Okay, so next we've got this person over here. I have to kind of cover up the line that I've already got. And then there's a hoodie going on, which is kind of difficult. It goes like 
this I think and slight issue this is my full headline and this person's bald add a headline and then we're gonna have to i don't know lightly shade it in and then they've got a shoulder and sleeve oh and then we go into bottoms actually so that's this person looks wide maybe it's the head's too small compared to the others i think the final person's slightly off compared to what we've got but we've already got lines here so i'm gonna stick to it don't think the face shape is too bad. Quite crazy hair. Bottom of the nose is about here. Does that show that this is an arm? And then we've got a belt with a chain. That is old school. Uh, this person has legs in short. And the other leg um, just disappears. Let's work on the back kind of a little bit now. I kind of wanted to do, I wanted it to be negative space so that the people really stand out. So what I was going to do was just fill in the background with like little bits of cross hatching. I sort of started to do it on the other side. I'm actually really impressed with how this has gone out. I think it does kind of look like an overhead shot, especially this person here at the bottom. I feel like it's better to create 10 really quick bad pieces than focus really hard to do one good one because you learn more by experimenting and also working quickly and just getting as many pieces out there as you can. What do you think of this? I really like the background. It's so different to what I've done before. This person especially, it does look like it's overhead. I'm not too sure about the others. Ended up coloring that hair just because it wasn't exactly in the right place. And then I did that one so that it didn't look too odd. We could try and do some faces just like this and no sketch underneath, just go straight for it. That could really help. These portraits are kind of wild. We're starting off with a red Posca and just going straight in with no sketch at all. Honestly, I think this is the technique that I should have done for the 100 heads challenge that I did in 10 days. The one where I drew 100 heads in one day, we definitely did this towards the end. And it's a lot faster, but obviously the portraits turn out a lot worse. The pencil sketch that's underneath is necessary to try and get the most accurate proportions possible. And without the pencil sketch, you kind of just end up winging a face on the spot, making a lot of mistakes that are anatomically incorrect. But at the same time, it allows you to be able to create a lot faster, as long as you understand that there will be mistakes. Sometimes you can learn a lot more by working fast and creating as much art as you can. And these portraits are all very quick, especially this purple one here. It does have a lot of mistakes. I mean, going straight in and trying to draw glasses without a sketch underneath is probably one of the most chaotic things I've done in my sketchbooks. Also, this is kind of random, but I haven't quite figured out how to draw beards yet. They just kind of pop up occasionally and I don't really know what to do, especially if I'm just using one colour for an entire portrait like this. I don't know how you're supposed to draw a jawline and a beard in the same colour. I haven't figured that one out yet. The final one is yellow, so you can't see a lot of it. I was hoping the yellow would show up more than it did, but it's probably for the best since this one is awful. And I'm not going to put you through this train wreck. This is how the drawings are turned out. I think they look kind of decent. I mean, the Posca's kind of forced me to like not change the lines too much. Like this person's jawline is kind of crazy, but obviously I wasn't able to change it. Same with this nose that's too big. It really is harder to do portraits like this. Each one of these took me about five minutes. Looking at Pinterest, I've typed in the word landscape because we've not done any outside landscapes yet. I'm thinking of doing some little boxes and doing each of the landscapes in each of the little boxes. Just a quick fire, get the lines down kind of drawing. I've never done this sketch because idea before. I think I saw some other people do this on Instagram and I desperately wanted to give it a try. This is the perfect warm-up and it's something I'm going to be doing more often. I want to do it before painting proper pieces and also I think when painting outside it would be a lot easier to just block in pencil marks like this because these landscapes were really fast. The lines are confident and I really love the way they look. It's a perfect drawing idea and if you haven't given it a try then you really should. Brush markers are a lot of fun to use. They're vibrant, they don't go through the page and I love a lot of these colours, especially this pink. This is gorgeous. 
The green one ended up looking a little bit odd, but that's not because it's green. It's because it was kind of like a bridge. It was a very detailed landscape and it looks a little bit odd. But now we're moving on to purple. Look at the state of this purple. This was brand new when I got it and I just got really unlucky. It's not a fine tip. It's completely bent and wobbly, but let's see what we can make with it. Whilst I do kind of want to fill certain areas in to make this look better, I think it's important that we can see the lines. And honestly, I think that these are kind of cute. I kind of want to carry it on here, but maybe use colour pencils. I'm literally just starting with this and just flipping through. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, let's do these next. I've just had lunch. It's really dark outside. Let's pick some nice colours to choose. So we've got quite a few bright colours on this one. Maybe we'll do some slightly more muted ones. Happy Morton Violet and this is kind of like a purpley red brown. It's really nice. Oh we could do this one. We haven't really done much of a pink yet. Middle purple pink. Maybe this one. Maybe this light blue. See these lines are already not as good. And there's kind of crazy clouds on this one so it sort of goes like... I think clouds are quite difficult to do anyway to be honest. Maybe the green would look better just so it's slightly further away. And I might do this one. I don't think green is going to work at all for this but I'll give it a try. This one is quite wonky and it's quite big. I don't know, I think it suited the brush mark is a little bit better, this style. But this has still been like a really fun idea. This is something I would like to do in the future already. This paper seems so good now that I'm coming back to it from the Daily Doodle Diary. So the mountains kind of go like that. It's going to be a little bit of a crazy shape. This cute little house. Land. And then we've got some cute flowers down here. And then this is just kind of like grass, really. Let's move on to the last one now. So we've got some trees. Then we've got a row of bushes. And then there's kind of shrubs here. This is such a fun exercise. I really want to do this again. Which one is your favourite? I think it looks really cool. I think it looks like a really cool spread, to be honest. Like, this is what the spread is looking like. I think it's awesome. I want to fill a few more pages, and one thing I want to try are these water-based markers. The main reason I want to try them is because of the chisel tip. I'm not very good with chisel tip. I can't get it accurate, and the thing that I really can't do with chisel tip is I can't get it completely flat when it goes across. This is the size of the chisel tip and if I try and get it flat like I have to really focus to try and get it flat. So this is what I somehow want to practice. Let's go back to using Pinterest like it's Pinterest. Well this is quite cute. I just I like the composition of it. I just think it looks quite cool. Maybe we'll try this one. The tote bag. That's quite a big part of it. And we're trying to use the chisel tip like it's completely flat. Our key point is the skirt. So I'll do the skirt now. And then socks. I have a lot of experience, or like any experience really, with shoes. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the rest of the hand isn't in the picture, so I'm gonna have to wing it and just end it there, I guess. Does that look weird that I've just cut off the entire person? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does look weird. To be honest, I have no clue what we're really drawing here. It didn't work, mostly because the Pinterest picture is missing the rest of the body. So the drawing is just a floating half body and it looks very odd. I'm adding an outline to try and make it look less weird, but I don't think that's really working. This is just a very odd piece. I decided to try and make a checkered background looking a little bit like a scarf. I'm not sure that really comes across though. I think that's okay. I kind of feel like I've had enough of the chisel tip now, so I want to move on to something else, even if we just use the other end of these pens. Okay, I think this one might be the very last one. Something like this. Mm -hmm. 
So bear with me on this one. There we go, that's kind of a car. I guess these are kind of trees. Does that kind of cover it? I think that kind of does. That's the final one all completed. Let's have a little look for it. These landscapes I really love. I think the brush markers worked better. This one had some mistakes. This one's a little bit weird, but this one I think is really cute. I love how this one turned out. I think that's a perfect thing to end the day on. And we're already quite a few pages into the new sketchbook. I don't know about you, but I think this has been a rather successful day. Thank you for joining me on this little experiment. If you'd like to see any more videos like this, I will leave my art challenges playlist down below where we create lots of art like this in very busy days. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video, it really helps my channel. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!